begin. Hi, I'm Cindy Soriano and I'll discuss about PJEPA or ang Philippine-Japan Economic Partnership Agreement. So, dito sa PJEPA, ito yung first bilateral free trade agreement dito sa Pilipinas. Ano nga ba muna ang bilateral trade? From the word itself, bilateral, it means two. A bilateral contract is an agreement between two sides or two parties in which each side agrees to fulfill their side of the bargain. So, nakakover nito ay ang customs procedure. Kagaya ng kapag ang procedure, mas mapapadali ang pag import at export. Then also sa improvement ng business and environment and government procurement. So, for example, may kailangan ng Japan o kali ang Pilipinas sa isa't isa na specific commodities or goods. Um, mas mapapadali nilang makukuha dahil sa PJEPA. So, PJEPA, it is the Philippines' first bilateral free trade agreement. In January 2002, uh, it proposed the initiative for Japan-ASEAN Comprehensive in Economic Partnership. It happened during former President Gloria Macapagal Arroyo and she gave support to the Japan-ASEAN from April 2002. Um, it was officially signed in Helsinki, Finland by the President Gloria Macapagal Arroyo and the former Prime Minister Junichiro Kozumi on September 9, 2000. And gaya nga ng sabi ko kanina, ang kinakover nito ay isang trade in goods, trade in services, investments, movement of natural persons, intellectual property, customs procedures, improvement of the business environment, and government procurements. So under GPEPA in Japan, there are 4.971 trillion US dollar GDP in 2018 and it has 125,507,472 population. In trade in 2019, the second major trading partner is out of 225. In export market, the second major trading is out of 220. The second import supplier is out of 191. The total trade in 2019 is 21.38 billion. And JP share to Philippine trade in 2019 is 11.6%. The total trade in 2019, JP rank in fourth largest contributor for, for approved foreign investment. The total approved investment to PH in 2019 is 383.92. The total of Filipino workers in 2019 is 2,241 health workers were deployed to JP and 547 nurses and 1,694 care workers. So out of 501 care workers, 163 nurses and 333 care workers passed the JP qualification exam. Hi, my name is Abigail Estrella and I'll be discussing the coverage and how PJ EP help. How PJ EPA help. Aid and investment is para matalongin Philippines overhaul its infrastructure as the two countries pledge to strengthen their economic ties. Provide improved market access for goods originating from the Philippines exported to Japan and vice versa. Through eliminated or reduced custom duties on goods. Um, in room, both countries that is, are also committed to working together to promote trade and facilitation. Hello everyone, I am Angela Santos and now let's talk about what are the benefits that we have since the implementation of PJEPA, which means Philippines-Japan Economic Partnership Agreement. So, the benefits from the implementation of the BJEPA First, total trade improved by 19% from USD 115.99 billion to USD 137.97 billion resulting in the Japan 
becoming the Philippines' largest export market. Second, Japan remained to the Philippines' major trading partner, ranking second out of 225 countries in the year 2019. So, so sabi dito na parang sa simula nung nagkaroon ng partnership agreement ng Japan sa Pilipinas ay naging okay na or naging balance na lagi ang trade ng Pilipinas. At sinasabi din na noong 2019, patuloy pa rin na nakikipag-partnership ang Japan sa Philippines. Tapos ayun daw po yung pinaka, ay pangalawang pinakamalaking major trading partner ranking na out of 225 countries. Ang um, sinabi din sa article na sa walong taong average nila, simula lang daw nung partnership ng Japan at Pilipinas, dun lang daw naging mabuti or laging balance yung trade nila. Kaya, laking Parang laking ambag ng Japan sa Pilipinas. And the third is, Japan rank as the fourth largest contributor for foreign investment to the Philippines amounting to 19.89 million pesos with the manufacturing, real, at, real estate activities, electricity, gas stream, and air conditioning supply industry. Contributing by the largest part of investment from Japan. A lot of OFW workers, including the healthcare section, have deployed under the PJEPA program since it started in 2009. Per PLEA records, 501 health workers, 168 nurses, and 333 care workers already passed the qualification exam in Japan. So, ang pagkakaintindi ko naman dito ay parang Simula nung nagkaroon ng partnership ang Japan sa Pilipinas, ay naging maluwag din ang Japan sa Pilipinas. Um, parang nagpa- madali lang sila magpapasok ng mga taga-Pilipinas or mga Pilipino. Kaya marami ding mga Pilipinong nag-apply sa Japan kasi nga parang matataas din yung mga pasahod doon, yung mga nurses, lalo na yung mga nurses, self-workers, lalo na yung mga yan. Kaya sobrang laking tulong talaga ng Japan sa Pilipinas. And that's all po. Thank you. Now let's proceed to the next supporter. Hi, my name is Daphne Nicole and I'll be discussing the major elements of JEPTA or the Japan-Philippines Economic Partnership Agreement. So the first one on the list is General Provisions. It contains the fundamental principles and basic rules for such economic partnership. These are the review of laws and regulations, public comments procedures, measures against corruption, implementing agreement, joint committee and communications. Second is trade in goods. It provides improved market access for goods originating a vice versa transaction. So it means it is only a transaction between Japan and the Philippines and through eliminated or reduced customs duties on such goods. And also both countries are committed to work together and to promote trade facilitation. Next one is Rule of Origin or ROO. It determines the nationality of the product to ensure that only Philippines and Japanese products enjoy the tariff preference negotiated under the agreement. Next one is Customs Procedure. Both countries will um, cooperate to facilitate trade through the simplification and harmonization of customs procedures and the effective enforcement against illegal trafficking of goods. Next one is Paperless Trading. So in here, these are the electronic versions of documents such as bills of lading, invoices, letters of credit, um, just to ensure that certificates will significantly enhance trade through reduction of cost and time. So it really helps to make uh, to make the transaction fast and easy. Next one is mutual recognition. So this is between Japan and the Philippines regarding confirmity assessment of the acceptance on both sides of test result and certification issued by confirmity assessment bodies or CABs um, recognized in both countries. So next is trade and services. 
In here, um, trade and services can also mean or can be also called as cost border mode, consumption abroad mode, commercial presence mode, and presence of natural persons mode. So, next one is the investment. So, this serves as the foundation for greater certainty and security for investors with regard to the establishment, acquisition, expansion, and retention of their investments. Next one is movement of natural persons. So it, pre it prescribes the measures affecting the movement of natural persons of a party who enter into the other party falling under categories categories remunerated like for example um short term business visitors and intra corporate transfers and etc next one is intellectual property so this is where the parties should ensure adequate and non discriminatory protection of intellectual property appropriate and effective enforcement of IPRS against infringement, counterfeiting, and piracy. Next one is government procurement. So, in here, it recognizes the desirability of providing transparency of government procurement measures with a view of achieving greater liberalization and expansion of trade between them while taking into account the development financially and trade needs of both parties. Next one is competition. So both parties support the promotion of competition by addressing anti-competitive activities in, or in order to facilitate trade and investment flows between them and, for the, and also for the efficient functioning of their markets. Uh, next is improve of business environment um, in order to further promote bilateral trade and investment um, both parties will cooperate to improve the business and environment in both countries next is the cooperation so the parties shall foster bilateral cooperation for their mutual benefits in order to facilitate and liberalize trade and investment and to assess their development goals. Next one is dispute avoidance and settlement. So this chapter provides a framework to the avoidance and settlement of disputes between Japan and the Philippines regarding the interpretation of application of JETPA. And last is the final provisions. Um, the final provisions cover the future and remaining work under JETPA. Um, these are the ano, the general review, amendment, entry into force, and lastly, the termination. And that's all. Thank you. Today, I am Justin Mesa Toledo and I will be discussing about the Philippines European Free Trade Association. In short, PHEAFTA. It is the second bilateral agreement the Philippines has entered into. Ito daw po yung pangalawang bilateral, bilateral agreement na kinabilangan ng Pilipinas. The FTA states will abolish all import duties on industrial, fish, and other marine products originating from the Philippines. On the other hand, the Philippines would gradually reduce or eliminate import duties on some goods originating from an EFTA state. Sabi po dito, yung EFTA, EFTA daw po, i-abolish yung import duties on industrial, fish, and other marine products na nanggagaling or nagmula dito sa Pilipinas. Sa kabilang banda naman daw po, yung Pilipinas is paunti-unti niyang babawasan or tatanggalin yung import duties sa same goods na nagmula sa EFTA state. PHEFTA is an exporter's origin declaration instead of uncertificate of origin. So yung PHEFTA
PIFTA daw po is gumamit ng Exporters Origin Declaration imbis na Certificate of Origin. Next naman po is i-discuss ko yung background ng PHEFTA. EFTA first conveyed its interest to have a free trade agreement with the Philippines in 2009. AFTA scoping discussions were concluded during a high-level scoping meeting in November 2014. The joint declaration on cooperation between the Philippines and EAFTA was signed on 23 on 23rd of June 2014. The Philippines, Norway, Liechtenstein, and Switzerland are the latest EFTA member states to sign a free trade agreement with the European Union. The agreement entered into force on June 1, 2018 for the Philippines, January 1, 2019 for Norway, July 1, 2017 for Switzerland, and January 1, 2020 for Iceland. Exports to the EFTA Markets will no longer require a certificate of origin under the FTA. All exporters are encouraged to register with the Bureau of Customs as an approved exporter. Detailed guidelines on this can be found in Customs Memorandum No. 14-2018. Covers The PHPFTA covers trade and services to ID, trade and services which is TIS, Investments in Central Public ID, Government Procurement, which is GP, Competition and Trade and Sustainable Development. So, good morning guys. Before I start, let me introduce you myself. So, I'm Francis Kael El Torejas, and my report is the Rational for Engaging EFTA. So, Rational for Engaging EFTA is the PHEFTA FTA is part of the country's strategy to gain stronger foothold in the European market, and there is large potential to expand trade and investments relations with EFTA. So, sinasabi dito, ang PHEFTA is part ng strategy ng isang bansa para magkaroon ng ng mala, malakas na panghawakan sa European market at may malaking potential din daw ito na ma-expand ang trade and investments relation kapag may relations daw sa EFTA so next is the content of the agreement so content of the agreement first is the increased market access so increased market access Philippines will eliminate most tariff to EFTA exporters within 7 years and EFTA countries eliminated 99.9% of their duties on industrial products as of the entry into force of the agreement. And next is the reduction of non-tariff barriers for goods. So reduction of non-tariff barriers for goods to ensure a stronger cooperation on controls and checks for animal and plant health and to recognize the international standards and regulations. So next is the service and investment. So service and, and investment is facilitated access to the Philippine market and transparent, non-discriminatory and predictable conditions. And next is the protection of intellectual property rights. So, so in protection of intellectual property rights is common understanding of the domestic regulatory framework across key IP address. And it sets out the important parameters of enforce, enforcement of intellectual property rights in a transparent manner. And, and next is the horizontal issues and dispute settlement. So the horizontal issues and dispute settlement is to establish the rules and procedure applying with respect to the avoidance or settlement of any dispute that may arise between the parties. And last is the trade and sustainable development. So trade and sustainable development is to recognize the importance of the interdependence between trade and sustainable development. So ayun na tapos na po, ayun na po yung content of the agreement. And next po is the 
key outcomes and benefits of EFTA in the Philippines. So, first is the, the FTA provides the Philippines duty-free market access for all industrial and fisheries tariff lines. And it also secured tariff concessions on substanti substantially all pH agriculture exports to EFTA. And Philippines may qualify for zero tariffs for preparations of meat or fish even if the meat or fish is imported under the new free trade agreement FTPA with the European Union and the FTA also allows pH garments exports to claim preferential tariffs even if textiles use are imported and Philippine service suppliers can benefit from the commitments made by EFTA in all modes of supplies and commitments in cross borders supply and movement of national persons present opportunities for both skilled workers and professionals. And last is Switzerland in particular added an additional category of personal in the form of installer and main maintainers. So, ayun lang po yung ire-report ko. So, maraming salamat po. Love you all. Okay, let's proceed on related data and statistics. EFTA, total GDP 992 694 million euro in 2018 and total population 14.2 million in 2019 Philippine FTA total trade in 2018 is US dollars 802 million next is FTA food investment in Philippine in 2018 is 474.35 million Iceland GDP 1,988 million euro in 2018 and per capita is 40,800 in 2018 population is 356,991 in 2019 and area is 103,000 kilometer and next is Liechtenstein GDP 5,804 million euro in 2017 and per capita is 100,300 euro in 2017 and the population is 38,378 in 2019 and area is 160 kilometer and next is Norway GDP 367,894 million euro in 2018 and per capita is 46,900 euro in 2018 and the population is 5,328,212 in 2019 and area is 385,180 km and the last is Switzerland GDP 597,009 million euro in 2018 and per capita is 48,200 in 2018 and population 8,542,323 in 2019 and area is 41,291 km and the last is summary of the Philippine EFTA as a broad based agreement the FTA covers trade in goods trade in services investment competition the protection of intellectual property rights government procurement and trade and sustainable development in the area of trade in goods EFTA abolish all customs duties on in the industrial products as of the entry into force of the agreement whereas the Philippines will gradually lower or abolish its duties on the vast, on the vast majority of such products so it means it aims to lower and remove duties in such trade in goods and services Dollar bills, dollar bills, keep on falling, falling.